Welcome to my workshop. I'm Mike, and today's video is just going to be a little bit weird and wacky. I bought a new power tool. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And uh, with it came a whole bunch of other fun things. Weird and wacky. I promise you, check this out. Let me spin the camera around. The power tool I picked up is a Unimat combination lathe and mill. And this is the box from the power feed attachment. Here is the lathe itself. And this unit works either horizontally or vertically. And it looked like it had all of the accessories. Um, it does have some rust in some places. So this will need a little bit of a revamping. Uh, but this is designed to be able to do metal work. And I see it working in conjunction with my new watchmaking lathe. I hope to be able to make accessories for that watchmaking lathe and other various parts using this um, Unimat mini lathe and mill. So there's a peek at that. What else did we get? Okay, so the person that was the previous owner, I think they were into miniatures. So let me show you some of the things that I got. This is a tabletop uh, woodworking surface, and it has a pair of side vices on it. It has some uh, bench holes and a couple of bench dogs and a couple of clamps to hold that to the table surface. Um, but this was just um, an accessory that was thrown in as part of the deal. And then they had other items. Again, I, I think that they were into miniatures. So check out the other stuff that I got. Well, for starters, I have a variety of miniature bench anvils. So these are kind of cool. And uh, I guess if you're doing jewelry making, these little anvils, they, uh, they have a nice surface. They have a little mounting post that appears to be, is that one threaded? I think it's threaded. So if I wanted to make a stand for it, I could. And these are really just little hobby anvils. This one is USA made, looks a little bit older. This one looks like a casting of, of some sort. It appears completely unused, fairly heavy, um, but it would be nice to uh, see what we can do on there if we ever venture into the uh, jewelry or watch repair uh, angle of things. Okay, so what else did we get? Got some weird handheld tools here. Um, this one isn't so weird. This is a uh, Swiss made pier set of tweezers. I think this is, uh, is this double A tweezers? Yeah, so those are double A's. A pair of locking forceps, a nice big pair. Check out these little micro tweezers. I'm sorry, not tweezers, these are micro scissors. Snip, snip, snip. Okay, they look uh, medical to me, but they might find their way into hobby stuff. Um, some self-locking tweezers or holders, and uh, this might be handy for soldering. It turns out this tweezer, also self-locking, is specifically for soldering. And if you grab, uh, grab hold of your wire before soldering with this little collared extension, if you hold on to the insulation, the plastic insulation on the wire, like this, this tool serves as a heat sink to keep you from melting your plastic insulation as you're soldering. What else did we get? Oh, this one is very cool. This is a proportional um, divider caliper. And what you do is you can use this screw adjustment to set a different ratio. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. Let's say we just go three to one. So if I was doing a, a proportional or I wanted to scale a model or reproduce a part, three to one. Let's say I was doing one third scale. I would measure what I wanted to measure. Let's say I'm measuring the top of this anvil. Okay, 
So I'd set my caliper to the width. And when you come down to this end, I'd be able to mark my piece. That would be exactly one third of the distance that I set on those calipers. So that is a proportional uh, caliper. And maybe I can find a use for this with the lathe. I also got these very scary looking devices. Um, they're, they're shockingly named ear polypers. I don't like that name. It implies that these are meant for getting polyps out of your ear. But check this out. When you do the scissor motion, it's just a very, very small scissor motion, it opens and closes this little alligator jaw on the front. So why would someone have something like this? And this one is a, a smaller one. It does the same thing. It has that little alligator mouth that opens and closes. Well, here's the for instance, if you are doing models like a ship in a bottle and you need to rig the sails once you're inside the bottle, this lets you go through like a, a really tiny opening, a quarter inch hole, and then you have a clamp that you can open and that you can close inside whatever you're working on. If you are working with scale model trains, and you're trying to decorate like inside a car to make it authentic looking, then this would let you manipulate things like through a window of the train when you don't have access to move things around. So ear polypers, weird name, but cool tool. What else did I come home with? This should look familiar to many of you. This is a uh, honing guide and you would set your chisel or whatever else you're sharpening in here. Um, and then depending on how far it sticks out the front, that would maintain the angle and then you can sharpen. So I've used these on my watchmaking channel to sharpen gravers and I've used these for my woodwork and chisels as well. Okay, what else? Check this out. I've got a uh, vacuum vise and uh, this one is vintage. It's looking a little bit old, but it still is in pretty good shape a brand new Panavice. Very excited about this. I, I like the Panavice brand. Um, I have the mini Panavice, which I use all the time. So that is a welcome addition. This rather strange looking clamp has a Brookstone label. I'm not quite sure what this does. It just has, looks like an inch and a quarter hole in it. I guess it would allow you to just mount something that's like a post to a tabletop. This looks like some kind of laboratory stand. Again, not quite sure what it is, but it has this little articulated clamp. And I don't know if that hole is threaded. Probably is. You can hold on to something there. We'll find a use for that. And we have a couple more of these tabletop uh, bench vices. That one's older and used. This one looks brand new. This one looks brand new. Um, this is an old Stanley handyman um, desktop vise or bench vise. Very sturdy, um, in really pretty crackly shape, but I thought it was pretty cool anyway. Got this. This is just a very inexpensive, um, lightly made. I'm, I'm sure this is just cast. When it rattles, it sounds like an old toy car, but this is just a little machinist's clamp, uh, very light duty. And this was cool. This is a brass micro clamp. And when you turn the knob, it just tightens these jaws. And then inside the uh, those brass surfaces, I don't know if you can see it, Flip it over. So there's a few recesses. There's a straight up and down recess, and there's a side to side recess on that side. So if you wanted to center something with an edge or hold a wire or a very thin rod, uh, you could do that with this clamp. Okay, that's mostly everything. Two more things. Um, I got what's now in two complete containers. 
this is an assortment of extremely small scale hardware. There's nuts and bolts and washers and rivets, and they all appear to be made out of brass, and they all appear to be like this fantastically small scale. Oh, what are these? I didn't even I didn't even see these in in the uh, in the bunch. I'll figure that out later. But this is a, a pretty good example. There, there's just so many different types. Uh, the brand here is Hob Bits, and some of these pieces are just absolutely minuscule. They all seem to be made of brass. Got many more here, and then these are hand-packed like hardware store packets that just have a variety of different things in them, ranging from washers to screw eyes to eye hooks to, oh, I don't know. There you go. Small bolts. So there's some wall mounting hardware. Some of it is labeled. Some of it is not. But spare parts are always welcome here in the shop. And then, last but not least, this vintage drafting set. And um, I took drafting when I was in high school, um, and then I worked as a draftsman. This was before there was computer graphics, so we had to do things by hand. And this is a pretty nice drafting kit. So I added this to uh, my pile of loot, and I guess, in particular, this compass, um, if I put another metal point in here, then I think I'll use this as a divider with the lathe just to be able to set a distance and then transfer that over to, uh, to what I'm working on. And, and then here's another set of dividers. So there you go. I'll give you another panning shot of my loot. I really don't have a plan yet what I'm going to do with uh, all of the miscellaneous hardware and these little micro tools and parts that I got, but it's nice just having them and then I'll just let creativity run wild and we will find something to do with uh, all of these goodies. But in the meantime, my priority is going to be getting this lathe, um, combination lathe mill. I wanna get this cleaned up, I wanna get it running and I wanna start making some metal chips with it as a compliment to my watchmaking lathe. Hey, that's it. I'm Mike, thanks very much for watching. Be good, be well, and be safe. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.